This is the day that the Lord hath made. We shall continue to rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We join you a couple of minutes late today because we are making sure that everything is right for your uh, hearing, viewing, and edification pleasure. But we thank God for you tuning in today uh, that we might be able to share together in the word of God. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for yet another opportunity to give your name glory. I pray, Lord, that the word shall be fruitful, that, Lord, in the name of Jesus, as you are lifted up, Lord, that you would draw all men unto thee, and that we might get understanding through your word, that we may get strength, that we may get knowledge and understanding. So, Lord, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And, Lord, we uh, seek you. And you said you are the rewarder of them that diligently seek you. We give God praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We're getting ready to get into our Bible study. I'm going to ask you to continue to pray uh, for the people of God, continue to pray for those outside the ark of safety, that they will be able to come into the knowledge of Christ. Pray for every church, every pastor, leader, bishop, presiding elder, lay person. Uh, pray for this whole nation, our president. Pray for our Senate, our Congress. Uh, pray for our local mayors, municipalities, police, fire, uh, a sheriff. We need prayer. If we've ever needed it before, we've heard it as a cliche. God knows we need it right now. Be praying for our brothers and sisters out in Louisville, Kentucky as we hear that there's supposed to be uh, uh, some kind of message from the city today uh, about the Breonna Taylor uh, malicious uh, unlawful murder. Um, I would ask that you continue to pray for them. And I know that they are police and, and we love our police. I thank God for our police and sheriff here and that of Chief Hawkins and Sheriff Enos and all of those wonderful women and men of God who serve and protect but then you get some instances like Louisville, Kentucky, and no matter uh, what you say, and, I, and I, I just believe this, if somebody comes in your house in the middle of the night uh, with a no-knock warrant, and you have a firearm, which is a constitutional right, and you're woken out of your sleep to that kind of uh, uh, disturbance, I just believe that you're going to shoot and ask questions later. That's just my belief, and maybe your political affiliation or your uh, desire to be able to not see uh, other sides or other opinions may cause you not from seeing that, but we've got to get to the point where we stand on the side of right. And um, while uh, I support our police and what they do and they serve and protect, um, there are also some out there that can handle things so much better. And when you murder somebody like that, there has to be consequences. I don't know if there's going to be consequences today. If uh, history repeats itself, there, there may not be. But I'm praying for our friends out there, the Amy Zion churches and all the body of Christ and all the people out there, praying for presiding elder old Lacey Evans and, and, and Reverend um, uh, Barbara Hagler uh, out that Broadway temple right there in Louisville. We're praying for all the other churches in the Louisville district, our brothers and sisters in the Amy Zion churches out there. We're praying, and I hope uh, that whatever the verdict is, whether it be uh, of indictment or, in, uh, or whether there be no indictment, that peace will prevail even with protest. Protest with peace that we might be able to see an expected end. We're also praying for all of the things that are going on in our world right now. Uh, I would say that most of them are ungodly um, that, that, that are going on in this world right now, especially from the political spectrum. But we want to know that God's will shall be done. God bless you. Uh, as we start out today, Next, I told you that we're going to talk about the will of God. Now, uh, we're going to break it into two parts. And as I was doing my study and bringing it together, I realized something that a lot of times people get so caught up in the uh, permissive will of God, the uh, sovereign or declarative will of God, or uh, uh, the uh, direct will of God, or whatever the different uh, names, as many different associations with those names. We're going to come up with some key definitions scripturally and some phraseologies to be able to, to show you scripturally what the will of God is and the different wills of God and, the, and, and God's will be done. We say it all the time, God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But we've got to understand 
that there's different wills that we deal with, whether it is a directive, what is a declarative, whether it is a, 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 uh, a permissive. We're going to deal with that on next week. And what we're going to deal with this week is uh, what, what is the will of God for us? What is the will of God for us? And we've got to deal with that first because I found out if you go and deal with those three first, then you're going to jump on the side that, that you decide to be on when you're making decisions. But we've got to know what God's will is for us, what, I, what the will is for us. So we deal with this, and, and, and I want to deal with the first thing is God's primary will for lost people is that they turn to Christ and be saved. Now, that is God's primary will for lost people that they turn to Christ and be saved. Second Peter 3.9. 2 Peter 3.9 is where we have our scripture. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but in long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all, all, all should come to repentance, that all should come to repentance. So that's, that God, that's his desire, that we might be saved. But understand that we're going to learn next week as we deal with wills, uh, the permissive will, the uh, uh, declarative or the sovereign will, a, de a, a, a will of decree that God gives us an opportunity to choose him. But his will is that every man, woman, boy and girl be saved, no matter what race, color, creed or political affiliation. He wants us to be saved. Also, first Timothy, first Timothy two, three through four. 1 Timothy 2, 3 through 4. And it says, this is the good and acceptable, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. So this is uh, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Let me lead, read that fourth, fourth verse again. Fourth verse again. Who will have all men to be saved? Who will? His will is that all men might be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. The truth is the knowledge of Jesus Christ. I know you've seen political ads, Democrat, Republican. You, I'm going to tell you, I, I don't know about all of them, but I know on each side there's a whole bunch of lying going on. Whatever, whatever race you deal with, if you deal with local, if you deal with, um, if you deal with national, uh, people take sound bites and do things and, 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 and <clears throat> say what people will and do. That is, is, is called a lie. But Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. Don't get caught up with information and think you can compare that to what God wants us to do. His, his, his word does not fail. It is infallible. It's an infallible truth. So his will is that we might be saved. So that's number one. And, and, and we apologize for not having this on the website today. Uh, that is my error, but we'll make sure it gets there. Number two, once we're saved, God has a further will for our lives. Now, it's not good enough just to be saved. Now, I'm dealing with the will before we break down all these wills on next week and what they mean expressly. We're dealing with what God wants to do with us as unsaved to be saved. And once we're saved, he says that there are certain things that he wants us to do. He has actually laid out certain good works for us to do for his glory or to his glory. And that's Ephesians 2, 9 through 10. Ephesians 2, 9 through 10. Not of any works, lest any man should boast. For we are the workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto the good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them, all right? So this is what God has done. He's created us to do these good works. That's why we're saved, not just to sit around and, and sit in church and throw up holy hands and, and talk in tongues or walk around with a badge to be able to say that I'm born again, but he created us for his glory. Mark uh, 3, 31 through 35 is our next scripture. Mark 3, 31 through 35. And it says, uh, there came there this brethren, uh, and his mother, and standing uh, without, sent unto him, calling him. And the multitude sat about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. And he answered and said, saying, Who is my mother or my brethren? And he looked round about 
on them which sat about him and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and my mother. So we become joint heirs in Jesus Christ. So his furtherment of the will for our lives is that we become united in, through Jesus Christ, through the blood of Jesus Christ, the efficacious blood of Jesus Christ, that which we are saved, that we may be brothers and sisters in Christ. You cannot choose uh, to be just brothers and sisters with your same color, kind, culture, or creed. We who have Christ Jesus living inside of us, he has called us and saved us to be brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. So as we deal with this, number three, because God loves us, his will for us is in our best interest. Because God loves us, his will for us is in our best interest. Where well, God wants us to be in the very place base, best place we can be. Also, uh, the only safe place is with Jesus Christ. So you're far better off uh, in this thing that we live in called this world or, or, or in all of this sinful nature that we be in God's will. And that is the safest location we can be. Any other location that we find ourselves is outside of the will of God. So God, he, uh, Jesus deals with this, and we deal with Matthew 16, 26. Matthew 16, 26. For what is man, prophet, if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So in Matthew 16, 26, says what profit a man to gain the world and lose their own soul. The best interest is, is to be in the will of God because sometimes the things that you go after are not ordained by God. Those things are not uh, the declarative will of God are not the sovereign will of God that you have those things. Just because you can get them don't mean you're supposed to have them. So being in his will that I'm going to uh, live and, and let live and I'm, I'm, I'm just going to do what I want to do, understand something, there's repercussions for these things. But the best interest is because he loves us, is his will for us is to do what he says because that's the best interest of us and, and for our lives in Christ Jesus. Matthew 25, 21. Matthew 25, 21. His Lord said unto him, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou has been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter thou now into the joy of the Lord. Because now he's saying you've been faithful over a few things. God requires our obedience. That's what he requires. Not obedience. Now, now, now understand this. The Bible says obey the laws of the land. It also says be subject to those who have authority over you. Nobody in the earth realm has any power over you that is sovereign unto God, which means it, God is the ultimate sovereignty. He is God. He's the only sovereignty. He's the sovereign God. So when you uh, obey unjust things or unlawful things or ungodly things, when you obey those things and then you go against the will and the word of God, then understand God said, what did my word say? What does my word say? we got a lot of things going on in the world right now, in the political spectrum, in the world spectrum, about uh, the uh, things that people want to put up, people want to abbreviate, people want to make concession for, people want to make it work when it's only for them. We've got to understand, what does God say? He says, good and faithful servant, you've been faithful over a few things, I'll make you rule over a minute. That's been the things that have been assigned to your hands. That does not mean, well, at least I did two or three, three things right. That is not what he's saying, so don't use that as a scapegoat. Some things are assigned to our hands to be able to do specifically. Everything's not assigned to my hands. Everything is not assigned to my hands. I, 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 am, I am the overseer under God uh, by an appointment by God through Bishop Kenneth Monroe, my bishop. Now understand this, this is my realm of, of, of overseeing at Simon Temple and the churches that I oversee as presiding elder in St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands. Understand this, I am on the Fayetteville district, but I have a presiding elder who has 19 churches. So even though him and I are both elders, I am subject to the authority that's over me, which is presiding elder uh, Joseph Brown then to Bishop Kenneth Monroe, then to 
the general church, the AME Zion church, the board of bishops, but understand this, that Jesus Christ is sovereign. None of them are sovereign. They have authority over me, and we work in Christ Jesus, but I understand God is going to reward me not for unjust, but he'll ju he, he will reward me for the things I do according to his word. So I've got to recognize who he is as sovereign. You know, I've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. He's the only way, he's the only one who can give me that eternal life and give me, though, when he says ruler over many, the things that he has for me and is assigned for me. All right? Luke 2.10. Luke 2.10 is our next scripture. Luke 2.10. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. So that's what the, the, the Lord says. Fear not, behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. So he brings to all of those in Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 7.35 1 Corinthians 7, 35. Remember, we're still on because God loves us. His will for us is, is, is in our best interest. 1 Corinthians 7, 35. And this I speak unto your own prophet, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, and that ye may attend upon the Lord without, listen to what it says, without distraction. you got to be careful how you get distracted. Be careful how you get distracted because that's the trick of the enemy. And we'll deal with it next week, the permissive will. You can be distracted and you would say, well, if God wanted me to be able to stay focused on this, um, then he would keep my mind stayed on it. He's giving you a free will, a permissive will. And we'll deal with that scripturally next week and how uh, sometimes the flesh uh, we, 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 we obey the things of the flesh rather than the things of the spirit, and we get distracted. Everybody can be distracted very easily. I don't care who you are. You tell me you have never been distracted. I don't believe you. I'm not going to call you a liar, but I don't believe you because everybody can be distracted. But the thing is, is, is being like David, getting your focus back. Create in me, O oh God, a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Wash me. Wash me, make me whiter than snow, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. That's a powerful scripture, but that's one who was distracted, and you can look that up later. Also, number four, God wants us to know his will. God wants us to know his will. And we're going to be in an in-depth study next week. Please get your Bible ready and get your, your, your friends ready and tell them because we're going to deal with those wills. But this week we're dealing with what is his will for you. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 10. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 10. But as it's written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered the heart of man the things that which are prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. All right? Now understand, I have not seen, ear have not heard, nor has been entered the heart of man, the things are prepared for him. We often said, as we talked about last week, about we don't even know what to pray for, or we dealt with prayer, effective prayer. Uh, Romans 8 and 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit maketh intercessions through groanings that cannot be uttered, meaning that we don't even know what to pray for uh, sometimes, but the Spirit has to be able to uh, make intercession. And even when we know, it's because the Spirit revealed it to us, because it's the will of God that the Spirit bears witness with the Spirit that we are the children of God. So that Spirit bears witness with the Spirit. So as we deal with this, God wants us to know his will. So what he does is when, he know, when we give that will, that does not mean God automatically is going to tell you everything that he has for you. His will is that I would be the pastor of this church. The problem is I had no idea I would be the pastor of this church. I'm here, but I was uh, walking in his will, and God had mercy upon me and let me come to the point where I started to fulfill my destiny, but my destiny is not complete because he has not revealed everything. If God revealed everything that he wanted me and you to be and where we were going, some of us would mess it up. I posted yesterday, uh, God is trying to bless you. The problem is you won't move out of his way. 
A lot of us won't move out of his way. We, be, we become distracted, and sometimes we're the distraction because we allow ourselves to get in the way of what God is going to do. But we're going to talk about the express will. We're going to talk about the declarative will. We're going to talk about the will as a decree. Some stuff you can't mess up. Uh, we can deal with Jonah, and we'll deal with that next week. You can go all the way uh, uh, to Louisville, Kentucky uh, to get to Miami, Florida. You still going to have to come back and go to Miami, Florida if that's what God's sovereign will. If his sovereign will is that you end up in Miami, you can drive all the way to Kentucky if you want to. You're going to have to turn around and come back and retract where you're going just to get to your destination when if you'd have followed God, you wouldn't have had to go all the way. You could have went that straight down 95 South. We'll deal with that next week. That's going to be good. Psalms 119, 105. Psalms 119, 105. Let's bring some of these Old Testament in here so that we can stay balanced here. It says, none. Uh, thy word is a lamp unto thy feet and a light unto my path. Don't you realize that the sovereign uh, power, the sovereign God is able to be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your pathway. He will show you his will. Oftentimes it is not done in one swoop or one boom or one voice or one edict or one direction, but God a spoon feeds it, as my grandma used to say, a spoon feed it and give you a little bit at the time that you might be able to handle it as he matures you. God is not going to let you manifest in a place where your gift is not mature enough to handle it if it's God. If you go, God will let you go, but that does not mean that God does still not have plans for you. But anytime you walk outside of the will of God, there's often repercussions for walking outside of his will. They could be light, they could be harsh, they could be reminders, they could be convictions, it could be a whole lot of things, but we'll deal with that because God wants you to know his will. So God is not sitting up there saying, I don't want you to know anything. God is revealing. Sometimes he'll reveal it through a situation. Sometimes he'll reveal it through a firing, through a hiring. He'll uh, reveal it through a, a baby, a, a child, a husband, or a wife, or whomever that he choose. In the Bible, he uh, gave a word of God through a donkey, and the donkey throws the man of God off, and then he tells him, he said, what you throw me off for? Because he couldn't even see uh, the, the power and the message of God, because God has a way of being able to let you know what his will is, not your will, all right? Now, number five, number five. God's will is that we be sexually pure, that we be sexually pure. First Thessalonians 4, 3 through 7. 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 through 7. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his, possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of the covetousness, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter because that the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also have forewarned you and testify. For God has not called us to uncleanliness, but he has called us to what? Holiness. He has called us to holiness. So that's what he's saying is keep the temple pure and don't be corrupt by the sinful nature and sexual immorality. 1 Corinthians 6, 18. 1 Corinthians 6, 18 is another scripture that we deal with in 1 Corinthians 6, 18. Flee from fornication. Every sin that man does is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body, his or her own body. And lastly, Philippians 4, 8. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. So he's saying don't be deceived by the works of the flesh and by the enemy by the craftiness and the subtlety of the enemy, but keep your mind stayed on these things. So if you keep your mind on these things, and the Bible tells us uh, that, that God will even provide us a way of escape, 
that we be able to bear those things. He's able to do that because you've got to understand something that God called us for holiness and righteousness. All right? Number six, we're dealing with God says those who don't know his will are unwise. And it is God's will that we be filled and controlled by the Holy Spirit. Let me say that again. God says those who don't know his will are unwise. And it is God's will that we be filled with and controlled by the Holy Spirit. Everybody that's in Christ Jesus ought to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is not a lot of times what we make it out to be, what we uh, do uh, uh, in church on Sunday or what we see. There's a movie called The Blues Brothers, and James Brown is the pastor. Uh, figure that. Uh, he's the pastor of the church, and, 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 and uh, the Spirit of God breaks out uh, supposedly in the church, and people are shouting and dancing and cutting flips and doing the moonwalk and everything else, doing the James Brown, all that stuff. And when they do that, that is a sign and symbol of, of, of a worldly uh, 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 de depiction of what the Holy Spirit does. You may have never shouted in your life, but begin to be full of the Holy Spirit. Uh, you don't have to walk around talking in tongues, everybody, every time to be full of the Holy Ghost. And we mess it up because we look for the signs, but understand the Holy Spirit will make you live right. Now, understand when I say make you live right, it will cause you, because again, we're dealing with that permissive will that we're going to talk about next week. As we deal with that, the Holy Spirit is a convictor. It is a guide. It is a comforter. So it will give you uh, 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 such a, a manifestation of God in you, of Jesus Christ, that you will live according to the word because the Spirit is something that is inside of you. So Ephesians 5, 17 through 18. Ephesians 5, 17 through 18. And it says, wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of God or the will is for your life in the Lord Jesus. Now watch that. Leave it right there. Go back to 17. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. It says, so it's telling you, uh, be, wherefore, be ye not unwise. So if you don't know the will of God for your life, it says you're unwise. Verse 18 it says, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, we understand in the New Testament it says, these are not drunk as you suppose, for this is ninth hour of the day, but these are they who are filled with the Holy Spirit. So understand this, that the Holy Spirit dwells inside of us, and the, the Holy Spirit uh, wants us to be wise according to the will of God. So the Spirit works with us to be able to, fill, to fulfill the word of God. Also, as we deal with this, I want to go to James 1.5. We're going to go to James 1.5 and then Galatians 5. But James 1.5 says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God that giveth to all men liberally and unbraideth not and it shall be given. Now, that's the spiritual wisdom. That's not the wisdom of men. That's the wisdom of God. The wisdom of men is, is in, in, in high places and throughout the earth. But the wisdom of God only comes from him. So we'll discern the spiritual things. There's a lot of persons who are carnal with wisdom but don't know the things of God. So please don't you always, and I said this Sunday, I've been saying this for weeks, I've been saying it, and I use this because we got an upcoming election. Look at both parties. Look at the leader or the presumptive leader of, 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 this, of this nation. Look at the fruit of the Spirit and the Word of God and see do their actions, their words, and their life line up with the Word of God. That's the only thing you got to be able to do. But, but, but that's only judged by the Spirit. So you can't, when you judge by your flesh, and that's Democrat, Republican, lib Libertarian, Independent, you get into trouble because what you do is you will deal with their human character whether, rather than their spiritual integrity. And those are two different things, all right? So he does not want us to be unwise. Lastly, I want to go to Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Galatians 5, 19 through 21. 
Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Manifest means uh, they are magnified, they are exposed, they, they are seen. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, various, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, darkness, revelings, for such as alike. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And if you look at those things right now and look at our world and look at different situations or different groups, you see, all, you see a lot of those things working. Now understand, I did not say that we're not going to heaven. To God they rise at the fall. That's between them and the Lord. But understand, that's what I have to view by through the Spirit. But more than judging them, I've got to judge my own life. Uh, you understand that? To him, I also stand at the fall, or you also stand at the fall. So before you uh, attempt to get a speck out of your brother's eye, please get the two by four out of your eye. Because understand something, that a lot of times when we can judge others, we have a way of being able to shroud in darkness the things of our own selves. All right, preach Brian Thompson. That's all right. Now, number seven, number seven. God's will will participate in worshiping the Lord, teaching one another, and giving thanks to God and serving him. I know that's a long thing. You can abbreviate it. God's will, we will participate in worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ, teaching others, and giving thanks to God and serving others. That's Ephesians 5, 17 through 23. Ephesians 5, 17 through 33. That's a lot of scripture to read. So what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to um, just read some of it. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine in excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord giving thanks always in all things and unto God the Father, Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Now, uh, when we deal with this, and this is a good scripture, go to verse 22 just for a minute. It says, wife submitting uh, yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Now go back to verse 21. It says, submitting yourselves, one another, as to Almighty God. Understand, brothers and sisters, as we deal with the Holy Scriptures, as we deal with what's going on in the Word of God. Now, uh, as we uh, continue to go forward, we are having a couple of te technical difficulties, and I just want to make sure uh, we still go. Hey, praise the Lord. Amen. We got a good AV staff up there. I trained them well. Praise the Lord. So as we continue to deal with uh, that you've got to understand it is God's desire that we submit to him, but through our praise and through our thanksgiving. It says in everything, give thanks. The will of God is that we praise him. He's a jealous God. We're to worship him in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. When he's dealing with, when Jesus is dealing with the Samaritan woman, understand something, she's talking about water, he's talking about worship. But understand, it, co it correlates because he's trying to be able to give her something that she thinks she would drink for a moment. And when he says to her, give me water, and, and when she does that, she is, she is thinking of a substance. He's thinking of the spiritual. He says uh, he seeks such that will worship him in spirit and in truth. So God's will is us for, to worship him. If we, you know, I said this Sunday, if you can praise God over the football and basketball team, and you can give adoration, adulation, and praise, but you cannot for your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and you think that's supposed to be personal to the point where it's supposed to be private, but you can have corporate and you can have public worship of, 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 of things, of people, of, of basketball teams, of football teams, uh, there's a problem. There's a problem because you need to check out what the will of God is for your life, because the will of God is, is that you glorify him. That's why the Bible says, let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. 
Why would he say breath? Because that's the living being. He has put that inside of you. And he says, oh, clap your hands, all ye people. This is the psalm. Shout with the glory of God. It says that for us to be uh, exuberant in our worship, to give God praise. That don't mean you got to jump over no uh, chairs or you got to do the moonwalk down the middle aisle, but you ought to be uh, you ought to be in such a place through the Holy Spirit, by the will of God, that you have a desire and a will to praise him. That's why Psalms 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. That is the will of God. So when people look and say, why are people jumping around? Why are people praising God? We had somebody in the church last week and said that um, uh, the gentleman just happened uh, not to be African-American, but he's a Christian, he's a worshiper, so he's my brother. And he said to me, I uh, want to be able to experience black church. And today, I hope that I experience black church as I'm here for this homegoing celebration. And he asked me, uh, are you going to praise God or, 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 or give praise to God the way you do on Sunday, even though it's a funeral? I said, my scripture says I will bless the Lord at all times. And he felt liberated. And it, 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 it didn't have much to do with color as culture because that's not what he was used to, but he enjoys the mix of it. And I invited him back when we come back in service again, when we come back after COVID, to come and worship with us, whether he joins or not. That's not my thing. We are brothers in Christ, so we're supposed to worship God together. That's the will of God for our lives, all right? So as we deal with that, number eight, number eight. God's will is that we live in submission to God-given authority. God will, God's will is that we live in submission to God-given authority. 1 Peter 2, 13 through 15. 1 Peter 2, 13 through 15. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man, of the Lord's sake, whether it be to a king as supreme or unto governors as to them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may be put to silence to the ignorance of foolish men. Wow. All right. Now understand something. Uh, there's something called an unjust law and there's something called a, a, a righteous law or a godly law. Now, there's a lot of things already that are in our laws that are not godly, but we live by them uh, daily. And there's also things that are godly that people are trying to get rid of. We've got to understand that we live for the Lord Jesus Christ and we got to test it by the word of God. But you can't, you know, people are critical, but you can't be selective. It's got to be God's word or man's law. God's word will always trump that. Now, with that, uh, I, I'll give you an example. Our governor, Governor Roy Cooper, praying for him and his administration in the state of North Carolina and all of the inhabitants, because I'm one of them, me and my family, and this church family. But understand this, um, they haven't opened churches, but they've opened Walmart, Home Depot, Bojangles, whatever, all them places open. I have a problem with that. I have a problem with that because you can get COVID in those places just like you get COVID in church. I, I just have a problem with that. Um, I understand we sing praise, holler in church, but I saw people in Walmart sing praise. They had on masks, so, you know, uh, it, I understood that. My, my point is I'm going to obey the laws of the land because even though it's my right, uh, there's, a, there's, there's a, in the Constitution, my Constitution, the right to be able to have free assembly and worship, and then the, the state or the government uh, the federal government or the local government can't tell me the different religious practices that I have to adhere to in the church because it's a in the Constitution it's called free exercise. Free exercise in the Constitution which protects us right now from a lot of stuff that have been uh, uh, put out by the law and also uh, some things that even people want to do now. Free exercise is able to protect us from that. Now I said all that to say this, I'm going to follow uh, our governor 
as long as I feel like it's for safety reasons. Now, there's other churches that are open. I ain't, you, this is, please don't email me and, and, and justify why you're open. Uh, my, I have brothers and sisters who pastor churches, they're open. I, I thank God for them. I worship uh, uh, God with them, and we're, that's not the fight. The fight is, this is what I'm choosing to do. This is what I'm choosing to do. But if I felt like that it was a, a, a ungodly law, and it was something ungodly, I'm gonna fight against it, and I'm not going to adhere to it because it's unjust. So the Spirit of God wants me to be able to discern what His Word is and the law, uh, the, what's the law and what's the Word of God and how it relates to my life. And I've also be convicted by the Spirit to be able to know when I need to do those things that God is telling me to be able to do. But God is not going to tell me to just go out vehemently and, and, and purposely just go break the law. Just go break the law. Just, just go do it because this is what you want to do. God has, has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. There's different ways for me to be able to fight. So if it's something that were to happen and I didn't feel like it was right, then I have the court system to go through. I have uh, the right to be able to protest for rights. No matter, you know, even though people are saying you can't protest, you can protest. Uh, that, that is the right. I have that right to be able to do that. But I understand I got to be led for whatever I'm doing by the Spirit of God. If the Spirit of God is inside of me, I won't do things to be able to, to glorify the things of the flesh. All right? All right. Uh, let's go to... Uh, Let's go to Acts 4, 18 through 20. Acts 4, 18 through 20. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we could not speak the things which we have seen and heard. Now understand this, that, that's what we're in right now, in political fray, where we've got different people saying different things. I'm going to ask you to pray for our evangelicals, pray for our country, pray for our houses of worship, because we're under constant attack. We're under attack right now uh, uh, with the things that are going on in the world. It could even get even worse if, 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 if people don't listen to the things of God. But I've got to be able to speak the word of God. And that's where that free exercise or the things in the Constitution give me the right to be able to worship. But then I'm obeying the laws of the land. But as you see, we still getting the word out. So they're not keeping me from getting the word out. They're not keeping me from worshiping. I'm worshiping and getting the word out through Internet. So they're not stopping from what I'm doing. All right. Now, if, if they tell me I can't preach on Internet, I can't talk about Jesus, I can't mention his name, that I have to do ungodly practices. Yes, the Constitution protects me in so many ways, but God is my protector and my covering, all right? So that's what we deal with. Also, the will of God, number nine, sometimes God's will is that we go through difficult times. This is where everybody gets off the telecast, all right? Uh, sometimes God's will is that we go through difficult times, and God knows we're going through some difficult times right now. 1 Peter 3.17. 1 Peter 3.17. For it is better if the, will, if the will of God be so that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. Let me read that again. For it is better if the will of God be so that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. That is a powerful scripture because sometimes we're going to suffer uh, for his name's sake. And understand, we go through this. We go through uh, uh, the suffering. Um, and and when, we, when we go through the suffering, when we go for Christ's sake, Christ is still our protector. So just because that you're saved and you're in the will of God don't mean you're not going to suffer. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. He tells us there's going to be suffering, and we're going to have to continue to suffer. But we are on the Lord's side. And with that, we're going to be ridiculed, we're going to be talked about, we're going to be second-guessed, we're going to be hated on because we're in the will of God. Well, why would I want to be saved? Because I understand something that also, by, by being with Christ, I start eternal life right now. And then when I die in this physical body, this earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, I've got another building of God not made by hands because that's the will of God, that I live for Christ in him now and then go away to live with him, all right? All right, uh, 1 Peter 4.19. 1 Peter 4.19. 1 Peter 4.19. 
Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to what? The will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him. That's a powerful scripture, and understand that is his will. That is will, that, that, that suffering. The saint, the, 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 the biblical day saints suffer, uh, the, the day saints suffer, but we shall have our reward. Uh, lastly, uh, the Bible is revealed, is the revealed will of God. Number 10, the Bible is the revealed will of God. Uh, we're going to go to Colossians, find Colossians 3.16. Colossians, not John 3.16, uh, uh, Colossians 3.16. I'm just playing. I know some people uh, went there. All right, Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with the grace in your hearts unto the Lord. So the Bible is revealed, uh, the Bible is revealed the reveal God's word. So it is revealed. The Bible is the revealed will of God. That's what it is. So he reveals that. That's why you can read this 80 times. And on the 80 uh, first time, you see something you ain't never seen before. Or God will bring it back to your remembrance or reveal it for your life because now you're going through something and he reveal it unto you. That's the power of God. That is the will of God for us. And he wants us to live according to his will. Not thine, not your will, not their will, but his will be done. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I told you before, the Bible says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And there's a whole lot going on right now. Uh, that there's a, the, the nation, the nation, the world has to repent. Now, lastly, our last scripture is Psalms 37 and 4. This is the way that you, you keep the will of God uh, forever present, manifesting your life. Delight yourself. In, also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. God bless you, body of Christ. I, I pray that you've learned something through the scriptures today. It's been a joy to be able to talk with you and, and, and share a word of God for you, uh, what the will of God is for us. Next week, we're going to break down those specific wills. We're going to deal with those wills next week. So stay tuned as we get ready to be able to go into that on next week for a powerful word of God. I know that there's somebody out there who have been listening to this telecast and you say, I need to get my life right because I'm not in the will of God, I'm not saved. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you will confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead, then thou art saved. Repent of your sins and he will save your soul. That's Romans 10, 9 and 10. You can look it up. And, and if you prayed that prayer today, if you believe that, I believe that Jesus Christ has received you as Lord, if you be, him being your Lord and Savior. You can call us at the number that's on the screen, and as you call us at 855-929, it's on the screen. It is on the screen. I can't see it from here, but it's on the screen. Go ahead and, and call us, and we'll be glad to be able to pray with you and welcome you to the body of Christ. Or... If you, want to, uh, get, uh, if you want to join the church, I told you before we have over 500 virtual members. They are not members here, but they are virtually members, and, and they've chosen to be a part of Simon Temple. You can call us at 910-867-1182, extension 5, 910-867-1182, extension 5, or email us for either one at info at simontemple.com. God bless you, body of Christ. We're praying for this nation. I'm praying for the Supreme Court nomination, uh, things are happening to only further divide us. Um, I don't know what's going to happen, but I know God is still in charge. There's a lot of hypocrisy and a lot of unfairness going on, but God is still in charge. Health care is at risk in many places and people are hurting, but God is still in charge. People are hungry, can't get food, don't have money, but God is still in charge. There's a presidential election coming up, and I don't know who's going to win the election, but I know who is Lord and Savior. His name is Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. There's no way to love.
get caught with the toes on his fuse. I gotta get friends with his dudes. He did it for me, he can do it for you. For you. I'm ready to fly. Keep myself on with my hands in the sky. I can do all things I want to deny. deny. Many of you come with the toes on his fuse. I gotta get friends with his dudes. He did it for me, he can do it for you.